Hey, this is Notzer, and this is the Vermont. This is the Tier 10 Alternative American Battleship, which was released in 0 0.911, which as of the time of recording, every region should have the patch on PC. I'm going to talk about the armor, and then I'm going to talk about my build, and then I'm going to showcase a game. So let's take a look real quick at the armor. It has a 32 millimeter bow and stern, which as you can see, verified. Although at the stern area, this is really high armor zone. Not that you would probably hit that zone, but it is protection for Citadel. And I'll showcase that too. 38 millimeters along the side of the hull and at the top of the hull, very useful armor. 51 millimeters on the deck, 19 millimeter superstructure, and obviously the guns fully armored and the face of the gun is actually 508 millimeters, so yeah, your AP shell, not going to pin. Uh, and then if we take a look at the verified Citadel location, it is underwater, um, and above that, it's got extra armor as well. It's very difficult to Citadel the Vermont, in my experience, unless you're at a long-range shot. So point blank, it's basically like shooting a friendship. It's just going to penetrate, and fail to penetrate the citadel, but at long range definitely punishes the ship and it's easy to punish. It's a slow battleship. Now, as far as my build is concerned, my equipment is as follows. Main armament mod one for main gun incapacitation protection. Damage control system mod one, extra fire and flood reduction chance, because let's be real, you're a slow battleship, very easy to hit. Uh, in slot 3, I opt for main battery mod 2, which is fast turret traverse. I choose this over any other, especially artillery plotting. I don't know why they recommend that. You don't need any more gun range. Gun range by default is 24.5 kilometers. I think that's more than adequate. Plus, the gun turret traverse, you gotta have something that's fast because this is a big slow battleship. Your guns are slow, reload, something has to be quick enough. So, that's how I figure. Uh, in slot 4... Faster steering gears, uh, faster rudder shift. I opt for that over damage control system. While being slow, yes, uh, you can still maneuver to mitigate damage. And by maneuvering, you're going to enhance that 38, that 51. That armor is going to be very useful when you are changing your angle for incoming AP. And also HE for that matter, since it's 38 and not 32. Uh, then we have concealment system mod 1. There's nothing really else in this. And in slot six, I opt for accuracy over reload simply because this is not a damage per minute battleship. This is a accurate point alpha battleship. It needs to be able to locate your shells as pinpoint as possible. And artillery plotting room mod two for the Americans is that it also has no negatives. It doesn't take away from your turret traverse. Again, active maneuvering important in my play. I opt for spotting aircraft, fighter is just not useful, plus, as you can see, it has defensive AA, so its AA protection is actually above average, so yeah, spotting aircraft makes total sense. For the commander, we are using the typical commander build that I opt for, priority target, and then I take expert marksman, superintendent, fire prevention, and then I go and take preventative maintenance once again. Uh, to emphasize the protection for incapacitation. If you are a battleship, it's a no-brainer. It's honestly mandatory to take this and main armament mod 1 because of the incapacitation protection. You, you lose a lot of damage. You really do when your gun is incapacitated. So that's why I emphasize it and go right back up. That's my 11 point. And then, you know, we pick up concealment expert. Uh, I choose to use high alert over basic survivability because high alert plus preventative maintenance three points versus that three. Uh, this helps with damage control party. Since it's American, damage control actually has a really long duration, 20 seconds. So I regularly have damage control up for a Thunderer's first salvo, activate it to turn off fire, and then I'm immune for the second follow-up salvo. And then by that time, I've either disengaged or the Thunderer doesn't have angle anymore. Maybe he's behind an island because, you know, I ram islands all day. But let's take a look at a really awesome game and you can see for yourself how great the Vermont really is. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is designed with modern living in mind. 
It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash while maintaining a slimmer design compared to a more traditional wallet. There are over 30 colors and styles available, including two brand new styles. We have Damascus, and then we also have Stone Washed. Both of these and more can be found at Ridge.com. The wallets come with a lifetime warranty and over 40,000 five-star reviews. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't absolutely love it. The Ridge wallet is the perfect gift for this holiday season. Visit ridge.com forward slash notzer and use the offer code notzer for a 10% off your next purchase today. So we spawned in on Hotspot and it was the center, kind of worst case scenario as far as getting to the flank because this is the slowest tier 10 battleship in the game. It's not quite as slow as Colorado, but it's much closer to Colorado than anyone wants to be. Uh, so, obviously, between the two, west or east, I chose the east. We'll see how well that works out. Don't really have anything to go off of. This is an aircraft carrier game, so it will be showcasing how we work with an aircraft carrier. And, you know, first enemies, first enemy contact, they're going to fire on whatever they see, which they obviously see me. Uh, I am set on fire, and I immediately use my damage control. Now, why do I do that? Uh, I do that because the follow-up salvo and the intent to drop off. Now, enemy aircraft is kind of in the area, but we're gonna try to reduce incoming as best as we can. And, ooh, hello there, Mr. Geary. He went up the side over there, and thankfully we actually have a salvo uh, that's angled appropriately. Unfortunately, we missed with all but one gun, but one is enough to take 5,000 off his life. So, all in all, it was good. Uh, he's obviously going up against a friendly Shimakaze, and I'm very concerned that the Shimakaze is probably going to die. And the more enemy ships that I'm seeing, the more concern I have that, oh yeah, there's too many on this flank. Now, one thing that's interesting right here, if I was the Montana and I had the exact same scenario, I would have reloaded 10 seconds faster and I actually would have been able to fire at the enemy DD that showed up for a brief second but because I'm in the Vermont, and I have a 40 second reload, and of course, the Shima's dead. I have to just wait there and watch helplessly. Now, why do I emphasize accuracy over reload? Because you don't have anything that you can emphasize on the reload front. Emphasizing reload would be just taking away from the strength of the ship, which is accuracy. Delivering the largest heaviest AP Alpha in the game to any target that you want. And speaking of targets that I want to kill, do damage to, uh, the enemy gearing shows up and we land five over pin for a significant amount of damage. So because of the accuracy and the amount of guns, even these 12 457s, and I had concerns that AP 457s over pin all the time, it's still significant because it's 12 guns, just like the Montana. So, you're always going to be a force to be reckoned with, and from, honestly, any gun range, if you, you know, invest in the same types of things that I've chosen to. Uh, the Nomogram Classic, or some type of dynamic that adjusts for the shell gun velocity, you really desperately need those for American battleships, because they have among the slowest shell gun velocity in the game. Uh, in order to really land and stay accurate, it's just... I think it's mandatory, and I, I recommend anyone viewing this consider my other video, the Numbergram Classic. I should have a link to the video on the screen showing up right now, but highly recommend viewing that and installing it. If you have any interest in anything American in this game, it really helps compensate for that slow gun velocity. Now, we've got enemy aircrafts keeping us spotted, and it's an, it's an annoying part of playing with an aircraft carrier. and. It's absolutely going to be here because your concealment is not as impressive because you're a battleship. So you're going to be spotted anytime an aircraft carrier is attacking anyone in your area. Just the way it goes. But 38 millimeters on the side, midship, 51 on the top of the hull. That's a significant amount of armor. And uh, we've got an enemy broadside, which I want to take full advantage of. But we're sort of working ourselves into uh, gun range and there 
Kremlins going across with this enemy Vermont. Uh, shells look pretty good. Yeah, shells look great. Uh, probably did like 25% of his life right there. Uh, 457 loves shooting other battleships. It is the king of shooting other battleships. And there's no one that's bringing 12 of them. There's not a single ship in the game that has 12 450, 457s except for this one. So we did a good job on that Vermont, but Vermont could easily follow up. But I don't care as much about the Vermont as I do about a prize such as the Broadside Muskva. Because Broadside Cruisers, they want to get Citadeled. And we get one Citadel into him, bunch of other overpen, probably another 30,000 damage there. It's really easy when they show it, but they're not going to do it forever. So you got to find sort of other targets that are willing to make a mistake because they don't, you know, pay attention to your exact position. But Fast Turret Traverse allows me to engage different targets on different sides of the map. Uh, I mean, the swing in my build with Turret Traverse and Accuracy of the Guns versus Reload and maybe gun range as recommended by World of Warships, which I don't know why they would go gun range in slot three, but regardless, if you were to go something like that, you're dealing with a Vermont that plays completely different. You know, 40 plus second traverse versus I think 34 seconds, 35 seconds. It really matters. Like getting it up there so high and having such a large slow ship, everything feels even slower. So I don't want to overcomplicate my play by Investing in sort of a stationary Vermont playstyle. I feel like that's that's a mistake uh, You're setting yourself up to be burned to the ground and I don't want you to get burned to the ground I want you to alpha those cruisers out so they don't have any chance to burn you to the ground um, Man, I would love do, do, do you ever feel like a random urge to Instantly kill something as you're passing slowly by it Man, I don't know where that's coming from uh, but we're on a really dangerous flank, so all the jokes aside, I kind of need him on my side because I don't know how much I'm going to get. Looks like the west side, completely fallen by the enemy. Everyone is seemingly coming on this flank, and that's, that's, a, that's a scary proposition for a ship that can only go with a speed flag 24 knots. I'm not going to run away. I can't. Uh, I have to sort of angle and uh, retreat, so, it, you know... Think of it as a military. You need to disengage appropriately away from while also being a threat. Uh, and as you're doing that, enemy Moscow, uh, maybe he expected me to commit more to the east side, but he showed a lot coming inside. And we're going to try and hopefully reload our guns. Uh, it's just devastating. Montana would have fired right there. Uh, just devastating. And yeah, I wouldn't be as accurate as this because of the, the traits of the Vermont. But... It would be accurate enough that I would prefer that to waiting. And I'm hoping for a desperate big broadside because I need that after losing out on the damage per minute. And the Muskva, he pulled the biggest trick of them all. He maneuvered his ship just slightly and avoided the citadels. And we only did seemingly 8,000, which 8,000's nice. Don't get me wrong, but... When you got a prize that broadside, anything less than uh, 10,000 or 20,000, it just uh, doesn't feel good. But we got our guns reloaded, and he's dealing with aircraft, so uh, welcome to the party, pal. We're going to drop this, hopefully, right on his hull. He's still avoiding the aircraft, which is just hilarious from my point of view. Not for him. Uh, overpin. We don't even get a shell to stick in the ship. That's not what we wanted. And the longer this goes on, the more concern I have that we will not be able to overcome because they have two bases. We only have one. They have more ships than we do. They have more DDs alive. They have their aircraft carrier, which is harassing this side of the map. So something, a DD, is over by A. And one of the, the things that I have working for me is both enemy DDs have been confirmed on the west side. So I have no torpedo threat immediately around me. So that allows me to consider moving forward. And there is an enemy Montana in this area and I would love to shoot the Montana. I'm actually trying to get Angle to shoot the Montana but he never shows up. Now I just give up on that and I'm gonna fire a salvo on this broadside Kremlin. 
457 really enjoy shooting Kremlins. Uh, Kremlins do not like large gun caliber because their armor is not as beneficial in certain circumstances. This being one of them, broadside. Uh, you would think, oh, broadside, easy to punish, but with really hard armor over your citadel, that's not as easy to punish. Uh, speaking of punish, Kremlin knocks out the Muskva. I'm thankful because I was going to show a lot to him. Uh, but I was committed to slowing down, using the islands to block line of sight, and rotating my guns and engaging the Muskva. Because as of right now, we don't see where the Montana is. But the longer we don't see him, the more he has con he has absolutely changed his angle. So he has changed his angle to address me. And uh, I need to angle a little bit more than I did initial shot salvo. Uh, we do take more damage than I would like, but we also did more damage than I expected considering the angle. But honestly, I should expect good damage from this position because I'm an American and Americans have really good shell arc for bow position AP usage. If I just aim, considering his momentum, so that the AP shells disperse into the superstructure, I'll do tons of damage. So that's exactly where I'm trying to locate. And we did pretty good with the front guns. Not too bad. I don't want to go towards him. He's a faster battleship than me. He's easily going to be the one dictating the pace. I don't want to get rammed. I think that my life's worth more than his. And honestly, based on the way people play, they seemingly think the same because I get charged every other game in my stream, seemingly. So I figure this guy wants to charge me and get a kill on Notzer and know that his team is not going to have to deal with some... You know, at this point, I want to be the unstoppable force for my team. But we got good broadside. Oh, yeah. What kind of German dispersion was that? Talk up this ship all day. And every shell save one disperses plus or minus at point blank range. Can't explain it. It's like the tide comes in, goes out. Can't explain it. Can't explain it. Um, but yeah. Um, we're going to be dealing with this guy, and I'm hoping the next salvo is going to actually knock him out, because this is ridiculous, okay? He is showing more side than I am, and once again, the shells don't go for the Citadel. We do get 14,000 damage, but the shells don't go for the Citadel, and that's what we need, because he's still alive, so I still can't afford to change angle, so... He fires his front guns. We have good angle, though. Enemy aircraft kind of getting me in a, wet, a Y formation, unfortunately. But he fires his front, then his back, and that is cue for me to show more angle, use my back guns, and use my front guns. And we're looking for the knockout punch. Nope. But the front guns do. Took way more damage than I ever meant to. Uh, but we're still alive. And we're going to capture this base. There's two enemy ships on this flank. Only one more other than those two, and he's near the center of the map, so I'm going to use the inside island to keep whatever enemy angle away from actually damaging me. Same goes for the Kremlin. I want the real prize. I want to see that audacious pop like a pinata to my 12 457 guns. It's one of the most satisfying things in the game to see a giant broadside, and I can't wait to do this to this guy. Well, obviously we're capturing, and I'm excited that he didn't end up actually attacking me. I think he tried to attack the friendly battleship that's pushing forward, because he obviously is probably spotted, which is cool for me. Uh, we're going to capture the base, and I'm going to just make sure, yes, optimal angle, engage, 12 guns. Uh, enemy aircraft is incoming, so I also want to activate my defensive AA, but we're going for the big one. 37,000, one citadel, ah, and it's big. It could be bigger, though. So, we're gonna clearly wait on the guns to reload, and uh, I'm gonna try and knock them out. Uh, enemy aircraft carrier, yeah, you keep attacking us. That's okay, we have spotting aircraft. We can see over the island and stay 100% accurate. Another broadside, knock this guy out, come on. Don't let me down. Give me a big old W in this. Oh, <laughs> barely didn't kill him. I think we did 99% of the remaining 100% life on that guy. Uh, friendly Kremlin takes him out. 
Uh, but that Kremlin, he did a good job. He knocked out that Moskva and saved my side. And this ended up being a great game. And uh, of course, the aircraft carrier, he's coming. You know what? I'm going to commit to angling. While angling actively to avoid incoming, I am still able to keep up with my gun turret traverse and fire on the Kremlin when he's broadside. And the enemy audacious, he misses the attack. So definitely recommend the build. Definitely thrive with this build. 200,000 damage, and there's still four minutes left. You could easily do 300,000 in a Vermont, and that's a lot of damage. That's more than enough damage to have plenty of influence all over the map. And, you know, this ended up working out really nicely. So I hope that the techniques and the recommendations come in hand. Uh, I love the playing the ship. I honestly love American battleships, but I really enjoyed playing the Vermont. And yeah, it's just another one in the tool chest that you can choose from it. Mmm, good, accurate shot. Earned Confederate there. He's taking a broadside aircraft carrier. Uh, I am hoping my front guns can angle, but doesn't matter. Game over. And uh, what can I say? Vermont really enjoyed playing it. It's more of the similar American Battleship feel, and uh, I'm on an American Battleship high. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You can also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, or review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.